Welcome back everyone to another episode of Tying Gig Builds. Today we're going to go over how to battery power Raspberry Pi. We have three different ways to do it. We're going to test them all out and we'll see which one is the most effective. So stay tuned if you're interested. All right, so just going over a brief overview of how to battery power Raspberry Pi is a few things you want to consider. All we need to do is get a five volt power source and the five volt power source has to have a rating of about one amp. The, the amperage is about how much a Raspberry Pi is going to consume and it's a nice to have a higher amperage rating just so we know that it's going to burn up. But basically we just need about one amp of a rating, higher would be nice, five volts needs to be the output voltage and that's pretty much it. To actually battery power this Raspberry Pi we're going to use kind of two different things. We have two circuits that are going to use these AA batteries and then we're going to use this uh, brick phone charger. For the AA battery ones, each AA is about 1.5 volts, so we'll need about four, which is about six volts to power the Pi. Now six volts can do damage to this Pi, so we can't do exactly six volts, and that's why we're using a different circuit to step down the voltage from six to five. Now I have a feeling that this Raspberry Pi can handle something between a 4.7 volts and 5.3 volts, that's just what I've been reading online in forums. So I'm gonna start with creating different circuits that start with 5.3 for each option, and then as soon as it hits 4.7, I'm gonna pull the plug and we'll stop testing from there just so I don't wanna damage the Raspberry Pi. Okay, the first thing we're gonna try out is to create a simple voltage divider. That just consists of two resistors and basically you design it in a way where your input voltage goes through this voltage divider, it comes out with a different voltage. It's based on a formula. And so all we have to do is pick the correct resistor values to get the voltage we want. The Raspberry Pi accepts five volts, so I'll have to choose the value of the actual resistors based on the voltage that's coming from the battery, because it's not exactly six volts. So we'll get to that when we actually implement it. The second thing we're gonna try out is this DC step-down voltage regulator. Basically, it's a step-down circuit that steps down the voltage of what's going into it to a different voltage. The last and probably best option which is gonna happen is gonna be this portable phone charger. Basically, it outputs at five volts automatically for us. It has up to 10,000 milliamp hours. So this thing is an absolute beast. It's rated for two amps. This will probably be our best bet. We'll see how it compares to the other options though because it is not the most cost effective and it might be a little too much for what we need to do. And just to go over what the actual test is going to be doing, we're going to be running this Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with these different battery power methods and we're going to hook it up to a monitor and just play a YouTube video for as long as possible. I'll just pick one that is very, very long and has a lot of graphics and we're going to try to drain the batteries as quick as possible by playing that full screen on a high resolution monitor and we'll see how far we can get. Okay, so this is just the first try. We're using the regular voltage divider. I'm just going to measure the voltage really quick on this four battery pack here. Okay, it's about 6.46, 6.47. So now I'm just going to pick the correct resistors to maintain the ratio to get it to about 5.3 volts. Okay, as you can see here, I set up a simple voltage divider. I have the 6.47 volts coming from the batteries into these power lines on the prototype board. I have ground just to be safe coming from this Raspberry Pi. It really doesn't matter. You can use any type of ground, but I have this line around. And then we have the actual voltage divider here. So I chose a thousand uh, ohms and then 220 ohms. And as the voltage comes in from this, it comes in hot through here. It gets divided by these volt these resistors here. And then the output is around 5.3. Okay, we have the moment of truth. We have the Raspberry Pi here. And then we also have the, <laughs> the voltage divider. And we're just gonna plug it in and hopefully this thing doesn't blow up or, or, or damage the Pi. Well that, didn't, well, that didn't work. Okay, so after a lot of debugging and, and checking voltages, I realized that this just is, is a fail. I wasn't even able to get the Pi to power up with the voltage divider. I found out the reason is because the voltage drops too low to power the Pi when we plug it in. There's just a lot going on with the circuit board on the Raspberry Pi 3. It's just not gonna work, and we need something a little bit more advanced to drive it. I was able to power on a Raspberry Pi 1 with just the battery that we had set up here with the voltage divider. So clearly this is just a little bit less advanced, doesn't draw too much 
current or anything, but the, the Raspberry Pi 3B just won't work with this Vulture Divider scenario, so we have to move to the next step. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna try is uh, the LM2596 DC to DC voltage regulator. It's a step down voltage regulator. It's variable, so we'll be able to toggle what kind of voltage we want on the output. We're gonna use the same thing. We're gonna use four AA batteries to power this, so six volts, and then we're going to output about five volts we're gonna have to configure from here and then we'll hook it up to the Raspberry Pi and see if that works. Okay, great. So we hooked up the wire and the little LM2596 voltage regulator and everything looks good. I soldered everything together. I'm just gonna try inserting this now into the Pi and hopefully this actually powers it. I have more confidence because this is kind of a voltage regulator. It should be trying to output at five volts and uh, we'll just see what happens. Okay, okay. I've noticed just from turning it on right now that the Wi-Fi is not working. I think that it's because it doesn't have too much power. It's only coming at four volts right now, the output here. So I'm gonna try to increase the dial again and just see if I can get it to five volts with it plugged in and everything and then we'll start from there. Okay, adjusting the dial really doesn't work and I think it's because it's kind of, it can't max out to five volts no matter what. So I'm gonna actually increase the number of batteries from four to six to make sure we're going input with nine volts. And I think that should be able to get us to five volts. Excellent, now we're actually hitting the five volts. So I'm gonna, gonna, go, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start slamming some YouTube videos. We'll see how long it lasts before the Wi-Fi dies. It seems like that's a good indicator of when this thing will stop working. Okay, I'm gonna take the leap now and just call it. It's been about 19 minutes and 20 seconds. So if you wanna power Raspberry Pi 3B, you can use batteries in this voltage regulator with nine volts of the battery and it should work for about 20 minutes. All right, so I took the liberty of doing the final test off camera. You just need to simply plug this battery pack right into the Pi. It works, there's no adjustments or anything you need to do. It just works, it's great. All right, let's go over the final analysis of efficiency and cost. The first option, which was just the bare bones voltage divider, did not work as expected. In hindsight, I realize now that it's probably because we only had six volts going into it. The efficiency of the voltage regulator is certainly higher than the simple voltage divider we used, and that couldn't even power the Raspberry Pi at the six volts that we had with four batteries. So I'm fairly certain you probably could power the Raspberry Pi with a voltage divider if you increase the voltage of the batteries from six to say 12, and then step down the voltage to five volts. The issue with stepping down from 12 volts to five volts with the simple voltage divider is that a lot of that power is lost specifically through friction and heat. So your resistors have to be rated pretty high in order for you to be able to pull that off. Option two, the voltage regulator. Now this thing is a big step up from the simple voltage divider. The issue is that it only lasts as long as the amount of batteries you have. And we tried six batteries and it lasted about 20 minutes. So it wasn't really that long. You could probably even add more, you know, you could you keep adding batteries. And if you say six batteries last you 20 minutes, you'd assume that maybe 12 batteries would last you 40 minutes and so on. I just checked on Amazon and they sell 48 batteries for about 20 bucks. So it's about 2.4 batteries for a dollar. Given that you have about 12 batteries to power for 40 minutes, that would cost you about $5 to power for 40 minutes. It's not going to be the best option because they're not rechargeable, but it is the most cost efficient. So take it as you will. The last option, which is the brick, the phone charger. This thing works like a beauty, three and a half hours and rechargeable. It did cost $40 though, so it isn't the most cost effective, but this thing I highly recommend buying if you plan on reusing the Pi over and over again with this uh, rechargeable battery. All right, folks, that wraps it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and hope you learned something. I certainly learned a lot from this video and I'm going to be using this concept in the future, probably about a year from now. I know it's not the near future, but probably about a year from now, we're using this battery powered Pi concept for a future project and it's going to be really, really cool, but it takes a lot of time to produce. So in the meantime, we'll be testing out small features for the Raspberry Pi here and there. And if you're interested in that type of stuff, I suggest subscribing, checking out our similar content, and like and comment to get, you know share the love. Next week, we're doing a woodworking build, but it is gonna have tech inside of it. It's actually gonna use an Arduino. I really don't like using them. I prefer the Raspberry Pi, but for this circumstance, it made a lot of sense. 
The week after that, we're gonna do a tech one to explain how we set the whole thing up. Until next time.